Hello everyone, welcome back to my clockmaker synth making process. In this video, I will set the lighting up and start polishing the scene to make it ready for rendering. If you have watched the previous videos, you know that I built a rough lighting setup when I was blocking out the scene. To start, I tried to increase the sunlight intensity from 1 to 1.5. I was not convinced, so I got back to 1.25. I now want to increase the light coming from the window. But the emission straight from the material is already quite high, so I will add a spotlight that I position in front of the window. I'm setting the power of the spotlight to 20,000. You can see that you get something dramatic and a bit overexposed if you keep the angle very low with such high power. I'm increasing the south radius to 5 meters to diffuse the light. It's still a bit overexposed, but the radius seems right to me. So I decrease the beam spot size to 25. The light intensity looks good, but it seems a bit too white overall, so I change its color to something warmer. The main element I want to add in the scene is the light ray from the window. I simply scale a cube and add a material to it. In the surface tab of the material, I remove the principal shader, and in the volume tab, I add a volume scatter. I decreased the scatter density to 0.2 for now. I just wanted to have a nice light ray, not a very dense fog. Then I duplicated the volume scatter and decreased its density to 0.01. I wanted to try to replace the emission color of the lamp's bulbs to something more red. As you can see, if you want to disable some part of the overlay, you can do it in the overlays menu in the right top corner of the concerned viewport. The left wall's elements felt too bright and not different enough, so I darkened some of them to get more contrast in my image. Generally, I use a spotlight directed towards the edges of the walls to make them pop, but in this case, I just wanted to add a small light source behind the walls, so I used a smooth cube with an emissive material and hid it behind the wall. It's not best practice, but it's really fast and looks good for a scene with no real camera movement. It's now time to add details to the walls. I wanted the left wall to look kind of like a clock, so I added some golden border like for a smaller clock. The reflection on the golden metal border is perfect. We can see it, but it doesn't catch all the attention. I really want to be cautious with the reflective elements when lighting a scene, because the light directs the eyes, and what I want here is to focus on the window and the clockmaker. The middle wall seems a bit flat on the outside, so I decided to add planks to it. To make them, I just duplicated four elements, rotated them and adjusted them along the wall in top view. Another detail I wanted to add was glass for the big vintage clocks. I just duplicated their backs and shed them with a principal shader with roughness to around 0.4 and transmission to 1. For the world's post border, I'm using the same technique we saw in the second video, transforming the post curves into a mesh to be able to separate an edge from it converting this edge back to a curve and applying a geometry profile to it. With the golden metal applied to it, you can see the nice light shining on its edge. I really like it. Generally, adding details at this step is just about choosing an object which looks a bit too simple and adding new elements to it to make it better. I decided to make a basement for the scene, just duplicating the window's border and rotating it. I wanted to introduce more variation in the floor planks, so I selected them all and in edit mode I tweaked the points in a way to have more different sized planks. 
You can see that I do micro adjustment to avoid too much object getting one into another. I like to have a small space between objects to get nice shadows. I was not convinced with the robot's bulbs, it was a bit too distracting. So I decided to replace the emissive shader with a metal one. I also found that the robot and the chair were a bit too close to the desk, so I moved them back. You can see top view that the robot is entering the back of the chair. What I'm working for here is the camera view. So if it looks better this way, even if it's not realistic, I leave it this way. At this time, the lighting looks good, but the scene still feels unfinished. I'm thinking about what I could add to make it more interesting. I go with the desk, it's way too simple, so I duplicate its top elements and rescale them three times to complexify it. This fourth video is now finished. Thank you everyone for watching, don't forget to subscribe and see you soon in the fifth and last part for the final render.